Welcome to the Louis File. We have been making our way through the letter of Galatians uh, over the past several videos, and uh, this one brings us up to uh, Galatians 4, uh, verse 21. Let me just give us a little insight for anybody that hasn't seen the other videos, maybe. Uh, the Galatian letter was the Apostle Paul's letter written to uh, combat some Judaizers some religious Jews that had come into the region trying to tell these new converts to Christ that they needed to be circumcised and obey the law of Moses, essentially telling them that they needed to go full on into Judaism in order to do what they were supposed to do. And the Apostle Paul was uh, sharing with the Galatians why that isn't true. And that is really going against what he uh, had shared with them about salvation being in Christ and in uh and that's it. That's uh, Christ alone. So uh, let me just put this together for you. Something that just kind of dawned on me as I've been looking through this. Uh, it's amazing how you learn so much trying to teach someone else. <laughs> uh, if you really want to learn the Bible, uh, start reading it in such a manner that you are trying to relate it to others. Don't just try to find information for yourself, but how would you describe or define what you're reading to someone else? It really changes the way that you absorb what the scriptures are saying. Uh, in chapter 3 of Galatians, we discover that uh, the law was meant to be our schoolmaster to lead us to Christ. Uh, and once we come to Christ, we no longer need that law. Uh, in chapter, the beginning of chapter 4 of Galatians, we see that... Uh, we are considered a child, uh, so in other words, immature as long as we are uh, walking according to the law, and the law is basically an overseer or a custodian over us, uh, but God's plan is, is that we come a full age, and when we come a full age, that means that we receive Christ, and when Christ moves into us, we uh, are placed as a son, uh, the Bible term is adopted, We're, we are adopted uh, by being placed as a son, fully mature, uh, according to the Word of God. And that means Christ is formed in us. And we are now walking by faith, walking after the Spirit, and we are operating in uh, what God has given us, what we have inherited in Christ. So now, in the last part of chapter 4 of Galatians, we see yet... Uh, an, an, an allegory that Paul uses, and it, it's also dealing with this whole idea of law, but it's telling us about two covenants. It's telling us about the covenant of the law and then the covenant of grace, what we would call the Old Testament and New Testament. And he uses an Old Testament story about Abraham uh, to illustrate this. It's fascinating how he does this. I'm I'm going to read this in its entirety. It's uh, Galatians 4, starting at 21 and going through 31. So it's 10 verses. Just bear with me. This actually might take a couple videos to get through because I don't want to skim over this too quickly. I want you to get the full impact of this. It's quite an amazing thing here. So Galatians 4, starting at 21. He says, Tell me, you who want to be under law, do you not listen to the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons. One by the bondwoman and one by the free woman. But the son by the bondwoman was born according to the flesh, and the son by the free woman through the promise. This is allegorically speaking, for these women are two covenants. One proceeding from Mount Sinai, <clears throat> excuse me, bearing children who are to be slaves, she is Hagar. Now, this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia and corresponds to the present Jerusalem, for she is in slavery with her children. But the Jerusalem above is free. She is our mother. For it is written, Rejoice, barren woman who does not bear. Break forth and shout, you who are not in labor. For more numerous are the children of the desolate than of the one who has a husband. And you, brethren, like Isaac, are children of promise. But as at that time he who was born according to the flesh persecuted him who was born according to the Spirit, so it is now also. But what does the Scripture say? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be an heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of a bondwoman, but of the free woman. Isn't that great? 
So we have Abraham, and we have Sarah, and we have Isaac, and we have Abraham, and we have Hagar, and we have Ishmael. All right, so they're given, he's given us this example, and he's saying that Abraham and Sarah had a promise from God, and they were going to have an offspring that was going to be completely based on God's promise. Uh, if you know the story, then you realize that Abraham uh, and Sarah both, I think it's about 10 or 14 years, it's a long time between the time that God gave the promise, and uh, finally Sarah comes up with this plan, and she tells Abraham to uh, lie with Hagar, which is, which is her handmaiden, and Sarah was saying, we'll just, maybe that's how God's going to do this. This is how he's going to fulfill his promise to us, is since I can't bear children, then, you, then you'll bear your child, this promised child, through Hagar. Well, that is not what God intended, and that is not, <laughs> that's not really what God was going to do at all. But Abraham does this, he, he goes into Hagar, and they end up having a child named Ishmael. So the Apostle Paul is telling us that this Ishmael is the, is the son of the bond woman. You see, Hagar was a slave girl, and she's a perfect picture of this uh, religious bondage that Paul is warning the Galatians against. He's telling them, you are not of the bond woman. You do not need the slavery or the bondage of religion to produce through you what God wants to produce through you. <laughs> Isn't that great? So the Judaizers, see, they were representing Hagar and Ishmael. They were coming along and wanting the Gentile or the, the Galatians here to uh, be circumcised and obey the law. And they were saying, basically, you have, to, you have to make what God has for you happen through your flesh efforts of obedience to the law. And the Apostle Paul's telling him, no, 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 do not do that. And he compares them between, he compares these two women, Hagar and Sarah, they are the two covenants. Hagar is uh, she is representative of the covenant of the law. Sarah is representative of the covenant of grace. This is such a great uh, illustration. And he even tells, the, he tells them, he said, right now, in verse uh, 25, he says, Now this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia and corresponds to the present Jerusalem, for she's in slavery with her children. This is quite an insult. He's telling, he's saying to them that, as of right now, with the religious Jews, the Judaism, the, the religion that is uh, binding people up, and he's piling that all together, saying the earthly, present earthly Jerusalem is in bondage because they're still operating and attempting to operate under law, even though this was long after Jesus was crucified, buried, and raised back, and the Holy Spirit had been poured out. Uh, this was long after the promise of the Spirit had been given. But yet there was most people at that time had not received it. They were still operating according to the law. That's not too much different than our day, even still, which is kind of sad. But then you have verse 26. <laughs> he says, but the Jerusalem above, now she's our mother. She's free and she's our mother. So she's, he's saying this, this relates back to what Jesus told Nicodemus in John chapter 3 when he told Nicodemus, you must be born again, which means born from above. And he's saying that this Jerusalem, this mother above, is where we get our birth. And it's a birth through uh, the Spirit. It's a birth that we have by faith in God's work, only in God's promise, not anything to do with us doing anything. So then he goes on to say that the barren woman is to rejoice and she's got more offspring than the than the other one and I think the point here is is that there it, ultimately Abraham is going to have more spiritual heritage spiritual children people born from above than he ever had that was born in the natural sense so what we call the state or the nation of Israel a Jewish person people today uh, will be far less than the people that are born from above uh, so because that's God's operation. And he tells us that we're like Isaac. We're children of promise. And, uh, and at that time, the child of the flesh, Ishmael, persecuted Isaac. So the son of the bondwoman persecuted the son of promise. And he says it's the same way even today. And that, I find that to be true. Because the more you share grace with people, especially ones that just don't want to hear it, and they think they're going to earn their way, they, uh, 
they'll tell they'll say that you're a heretic they'll say that you're a false prophet i mean all you're doing is sharing the truth with them about the grace of god and you would think because the gospel message is good news that they would just receive it but you know i've, I've come to realize that human independent spirit which is a lie which is a deception this idea that we're independent dies really hard uh, and especially maybe even more so in a religious person even in even than someone that's just a blatant sinful person because someone that's religious thinks they got it all together and that's exactly what the apostle paul is dealing with here with this galatian letter he's dealing with a bunch of people that are zealous for the law and he understood that because he was one of them so it's going to take an intervention from christ himself just like it did for paul but i just find it fascinating how the whole bible is telling this story all the way back and this is always traced back to abraham the apostle paul loved to use abraham as an example for us and it's getting clearer every day as to why uh all right i think that's all i'm going to tell you for this video uh thanks for listening i hope that uh i hope that you're you're following along the next video we're going to get into galatians 5. i hope to see you then thanks